We're here at Chad and Susie Chances in Pilot Point, Texas at CSC Ranch, home of Hoof Watch. And we're getting ready for the third leg of our WCB contest in Sheridan, Wyoming. And we've got the Flatland Forge, Jim and Kathleen Poor out there in Midland, Texas. We've got Flatland Forge is sponsoring the Novice. We made a Novice front today. The shoe is made out of 11 inches of 3 eighths by inch and a quarter. So a little bit of work's gonna go into this shoe. It's the, the mandatory specs on it are it needs to have a bob punch toe clip and fit up for six E7s. It's gotta be stretched a bit because 11 inches wouldn't even make a shoe that fit inside this shoe. So you've gotta make it to an appropriate size dimension for an appropriate size foot. This foot, we don't really tell people what the specimens are because we want people to focus on pairs and basics, meaning your nail holes to split the, the section. If you draw it too much and you split the section, you know if they're a foot that size that your nails will be too fine. If you don't draw it enough and you split the section with your nails, then your nails will be too coarse. So it's very important for you to draw out a shoe that's got the right proportion hoof wall for that size foot. I've got 11 inches. I definitely gonna need a quarter inch more material on the lateral side for two reasons. I'm gonna draw it out but you'll get a lot more sweetening on the inside when you draw out a piece. I got five and a half is center, so I'm gonna go a quarter inch off center, and that'll be my outside. So I'll be making a left front. All right, what we're gonna do is we're gonna just slowly run it down so we don't destroy the material that we're trying to make in the first place. That mushroom this edge, now we're going to do this edge. What we've got now is just a little bit of material in the center. We're just going to slowly flatten this up. and then put a heel on it. There you go, and then the single most hardest thing to do in this whole class at the ability that you're at is to make a nice heel. No cold shots, no fish mouths, just a nice forge deal that has a nice short radius. All right, this is the outside, so we're going to start on this outside. We'll put the heel on it. Got to find my center punch. Make sure I put my heel. I'm going to upset a little bit when I, even though we drew it out, I'm going to still upset a little bit. All right, a big mistake when people make a heel is they start from this corner again. I've already got the corners knocked off. So now what I want to do is I want to start a little bit lower and start in the center of my heel. Get that corner off of there, but... Once you've already removed this corner, there's no need to start there. Don't revisit it. Come back down to the center. All right, I don't have the prettiest heel, but I did this on purpose because now when I make my toe bend, at any given time, I can make a longer heel check. It is so easy to make a longer heel check, but I've made a short, I got rid of the fish mouth, and I have a check in the center 
I have material there. I can do, I can always take away heel check, but once you make it long, it's impossible to make a shorter heel check. Just try and make a wide open toe bend. Start here and I'm gonna push down and come up to the horn. I have, this, I have the center punch mark in the center of my toe. I built a toe. I'll have to adjust, if I'm off from this point, I'll have to adjust my branches. All right, we'll revisit the heel. My tongs are in line with the branch. If I'm up here, I will, die, I will wreck my toe. So I'm gonna get them in line with the branch and backwards, and I'm gonna just revisit making that nice heel. Got a nice radius on it. Put it right here and hit right where you lose contact with the horn and bring it on around. I got to do a little bit more past the heel quarter so I'll bring it up even further. Right where I lose contact with the horn. I've definitely got I've got two points of transition. I've got the toe goes to the heel, the fold of the foot, and then back in. We'll flatten it up. We'll come right in around the side and add a little boxing right here on the outside edge. This is gonna give us a little bit of width. All right, what we're gonna do is imagine where the heel nail is. I'm gonna lean my hammer just a little bit and come on down and go around the outside. Flatten that up real good and do that again because this is the last time I'm going to be able to get at that where I come off contact with the horn, making it with my tongs and come around the corner. Get it at the widest part and bring it on around. Even though I have a center punch mark on there, I'm still gonna T-square it for my nails. Six nail holes. Do this when it's cold. You can take your time, drink soda, whatever, and you're not, feel like you're under the gun. When you do it when it's hot, you're like, what do I gotta do? This, you can mine, you can walk it around. At this time, you usually got the shake, so what you wanna do is you wanna push your hand down because you're all amped up, and then walk it around on the shoe like that. Don't, doing this, you're always fighting it, but find a good spot and then walk it around to where you find exactly where it needs to go and drop it in. Just gonna forge it a bit because I got plenty of heat. I'm gonna go for my toenail and just forge the branch so that the toe looks a little bit bigger. Swing it on around. We'll flatten it. And if you notice, you can see, because I know the light, you almost feel like you got a trough in the center. That's what you got to be careful, because when you narrow it up too quick, the center doesn't expand, and then you've got a ditch in there, and we're trying to get that out the whole time we're working.
What I'm going to do is, again, start where my toenail is and start forging down and just sweetening up the inside a little bit. Lean my hammer at right here and get that saving and then, and then just kind of, that gets that little junk off the end so where it doesn't just make a point. Slowly, you don't have to make a big old huge. These are very tiny holes because I'm just sneaking in there and then I can open them up when they're all the way bottomed out after. I got one more heat and the one more heat is a bob punch. After I bob punch it, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna create the whole shoe around the bob punch. Gonna come in here and cheat a little, what I call cheat a little material out. It's the last time I got a free go at this, so I just wanna make this extra nice. Take my Flatland Forge Bob Punch, ka -ching. I've got my lip there. Just come here with the hammer on the soft little lip and just push it in. Now I've got a nice lip. I'll localize the bend on both sides. So now I've got a nice hump there that I can grab all the material in the world out of. I'm gonna come in here. If you notice, my tongs are uncomfortable. They're making the shoe comfortable. My shoulder's lined up with the edge of the anvil. And I'm just gonna sit here and camp out at the base. Come right here. I'm gonna go from toenail to the center of the clip. Just kind of blend everything in. Flip it around. Go from the toenail to the center of the clip. Is I'm just gonna take one cleanup heat. Since it's a hammer finish shoe, there's no need to just roll through this and try and get done. You wanna, if you do everything systematic, what you do to one branch, you do on the opposing shoe to the same branch, you'll end up with pairs. All right, I'm gonna grab it from the heel nail. I'm gonna go over the horn. I'm going past, working away from my heel quarter and going to the extensor process where the toe clip is. Boom. Pick it up at my heel quarter, the wing of the coffin bone, the bridge of the foot, and come on around the other side. That put nice flow in there. I got enough heat, we'll just kind of get her nice, just tight. There you go. And just make everything nice and tidy. Overlapping blows, just nice and clean and just making a nice clean line all the way around. And then Ideally, you'd like to have your last go at the Pritchell holes coming from the top side. I'm gonna grab it right here. We're gonna move away from the heel quarter or the widest part of the foot and take on the shape of that toe right through the extensor process. Then we're gonna do the same here. Come right over the top and just sweep that on around. Just ever so slightly, it's the medial. You're not fitting with a ton of width or length, but you do want to have it be good horseshoeing.
We just finished up the front. As always, the only basics in the world are a front and a hind. You're trying to build on those basics. There's plenty of things wrong with this shoe, but that's the beauty of making basic fronts and hinds is that that's the foundation that you're building on so you can recognize your faults.